Alright, my man, state your name and let them know you're on Nicovelli TV. What's going on, fellas, ladies? This is Joe Real. I'm out here rocking in Harlem with my guy, Nicovelli. Nicovelli TV, check it out. That's what's up, man. Nick fan? Not so much. Um, I'm a sports fan, but um, I'm on my way out of the whole understanding of uh, being a fan for free. So I do understand your, your ideology of monetizing and uh, building a fan base and being able to sustain something off of being a fan. I love that idea. Okay. But, uh, from uh, used to be fans perspective, I jumped off of the bandwagon of the Knicks when they got rid of Billups because they thought that Melo was a better uh, go-to situation. Now he could have been with a Billups on the side or if they would have kept Stoudemire in play, but they decided I believe Jim Dolan decided to dismantle that and get rid of Billups. And from there, they've been on a downhill that didn't change to Porzingis. You know what I mean? And right. Unfortunately, this is the type of business mindset that this man came with. And he's always dismantled the Knicks close to playoff runs by moving big pieces. This doesn't make sense. This is not a good business aspect. You know what I mean, but you talking about James Dolan? Now. Talk, yeah, I'm sorry, I called him Jim, but um, yeah, James Dolan. I, I feel like you know, it's not. I don't think it's the players uh, so much because they always keep a dynamic th uh, threesome or at least a duo that really can make things happen. Okay, but, so when I ask you a question like, mm -hmm. who fault is it that Kevin Durant didn't come to the Knicks? Are you going to place that on his greed because Kevin Durant? got $31 million to opt out from Golden State. Then they paid him an extra $57 million, right? Mm. So he could be traded to the Nets right, right. in return for Russell. Mm. So now my question to you, should Kevin Durant should have just took in the money that the Knicks was going to offer? Being that he got the bag already. Because he... See, now it's all on the aspect of what you think they in it for. I believe he in it for the chips at this point because... His endorsements is out the ass crazy. He already yeah. got rings, though. And, you know, but... He ain't got no respect, though. That and So, him to build that up, you know what I mean? That's simultaneous with a, with a chip. You know what I mean? You having a chip without the ring, you might as well sat on the bench. You know what I mean? For him to be such a tool, an important part, you know what I mean? That shouldn't be his legacy. Okay, so, once again, who do you put the blame on? Being that Kevin Durant... I put it on him for misunderstanding... Uh, oh, who? Kevin Durant or you put it I on put James it on, Dolan? I put it on Kevin Durant for misunderstanding, you know... Or, man, you know what? It might be a little bit of both because at the same time, he, like me, he might have did the research and the history and see, man, though it's a big check and it's accolades, is it the desired result? Is it the chip? Probably not. And that's the problem when it comes down to the Knicks and their organization. It's not again. It's not the players. It, you know they they keep some million dollar top, you know quality players. But you know will his efforts end up with a chip? I think that's where. So you think it's a good move for Kevin Durant to go to Brooklyn? Because I feel uh, like there's more Knicks fans in Brooklyn than there are Net fans, and I feel like he cheated the city of New York. I feel like he divided the city of New York. Well, they divided the city of New York by making a Brooklyn um, Nets type situation the way that they did. Because, um, you know, at the end of the day, Nets was fine where they was at in Jersey, you know? No, I mean, Nets I, I, actually I, I came from Long Island. Right. With Dr. J. I understand that. But when it was in they, the CBA. They landed in Jersey or whatever, and now, you know, they back in, in New York or whatever, but they chose Brooklyn, whatever, whatever, political shit. Right. Whatever, but... You know, because ever since that came, you know, is that brought uh, more of a what's it called, a tear in the in the city than what it already was sports wise. But then, you know, all of this money being pumped into it and still no chips produced. So it's like, what are we really doing? Not the players, not the but the, the organizations. You know what I mean? The Nets, the Knicks. You know what I mean? These business minds that done went to school and then studied and all of this shit. What are they doing? What are they missing? That way they're not able to get the desired result, which is a chip. That ultimately brings the the you know the notoriety, the accolades, and more endorsements for your team and everything. So let me ask you this, brother. Do you think the NBA is rigged? 
Like I certain things. So. Because the reason why I'm bringing that up, we all know about the draft. We were supposed to get Zion Williams. The Knicks was tanking, believe it or not. I believe if the Knicks wasn't tanking, we would have pretty much had a better record than what we had. Mm. We had 17 wins, 35 losses, I believe. Something went. Oh. I think that was a wrap. Right. Yeah, and um, we just knew we had Zion. Pelicans wound up getting Zion, and they had a pretty good run. And I feel that the reason why the Pelicans wound up getting Zion Williams was due to the fact that Anthony Davis no longer wanted to play for the Pelicans, so they was trying to spread exactly. So my question but to if, you, if, but if, if, again, if Dolan is dumb enough to go with that you know what i mean for a couple extra dollars and a couple extra but it's no longer in dolan's hand if, if it's about that sound like an adam silver fucking hmm. that's another aspect i don't know but let's get into players man you said you was watching the knicks when Mello was on yeah that was a, like i said that was around the time where i stopped watching because you was know, you a fan of Mello? when he was on denver a little bit i thought he was pretty good but I thought he reached his peak around when he was in Denver. So I didn't understand why they went with Melo over LeBron in the first place. I think that that should have been where we was going. I was excited for the Knicks and I was excited for New York when it sounded like LeBron was coming. You know, but I understood the same thing that I said about KD. That's probably what it was for LeBron or whatever. But Melo came with all of these big promises and things like that. And didn't, not only did he not you know, turn the corner for his individual self, but he just didn't produce the numbers and the, um, the environment for them to flourish outside of whatever these guys with, um, what's it called, the, the management does. Right. You know what I mean? Because, see, now, that's the difference between a Jordan and a uh, Charles Barkley or, or, you know what I mean, and greatness. You know, Jordan brought greatness out of his players regardless of what was going on. You know what right. I mean? Kobe, he didn't do it so good, but he's, he's found a way to get three, four chips, five, six chips, or whatever. Cool. But it takes a certain kind of capability where you can pull things out of other people around you. I'm you glad you I mean? mentioned that. Do you think we would have had that in Chris Pazingas if he didn't get traded to Dallas Mavericks? I think he was developing that. But I think, again, if we would have kept Phillips, then that might have gave um, Melo an idea of how to do it. And then he could have added that to his repertoire. He could have turned no, the But I'm asking, race. do you think Chris Pazingas had it in him to do that? Maybe, but again, it's, it was developing. It's too early to tell. He's still just trying to build, bulk up muscle and really be, begin to be a really good player consistently. You know what I mean? It takes time to and focus. Where your focus goes is where your mind and your heart goes, where your body goes. So if he's not focused on that, if he's focusing on just being the best individual player, he's not going to think about it. Okay. You know what I'm That's why Melo never thought about it. Melo was thinking about his check. That's it. So you say Mel Melo was a selfish player? I, I know he was. It's pretty evident. It depends on what you're looking at, though. You know, at the end of the day, you know, when – as long as he was getting his numbers or whatever, he was cool, win or lose. But when he didn't get his numbers, win or lose, he was mad. And he felt like he should have been more of a go-to. And that's that ideology that fucks it up. Because at the end of the day – if you're really for the win, fuck your numbers. You're going to your, get your burn regardless because you're a big-time player. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So you stuck in that mode of, oh, nah, give me, give me, give me, give me. Yeah, you're limiting your team, you're limiting yourself. You know what I mean? All right. So it's, it's again, it's on what you see on, in, in a leader. What do you understand these things to be? If you don't understand this to be these type of characteristics and qualities, then... That's not what you will look for. All right. That's not what you'll focus on. So that's okay. why I say, you know, in time, maybe we'll see, you know, because at, at Dallas with Nowitzki, Nowitzki's that type of player. So it's going to be no doubt. So in a sense, where you kind of prophesying it that, yeah, he's probably going to end up that type of player. Okay. You know what I mean? Let's move on to point guard. We all know that the Knicks was desperate for a point guard. We gave up a trade in Dennis Smith Jr. We could have had him. Long time ago, mm. for Frank Nilakina. Some say Frank Nilakina is a bust. He only averages five points a game. He's great on his on the defensive end. Right, right. But on his offense, people want to see more from him. Mm. Do you think it was a mistake to let somebody like Trey Burke go? 
when he got caught up in the trade between Chris Brzingis going to Dallas and we let go Tim Hardaway Jr., Courtney Lee. I haven't seen Tim Burke play, so I, I'm not. You never sure. heard of Trey Burke? You never seen I, him I play? See, I Baby him, I, I haven't I haven't seen him play like that before. I could make a, a proper judgment. But Tim, I believe they should have worked with him more. Who, Tim they, Hardaway? Yeah. Why think, you say that? Um, because um he was still developing. He was still and he was um he was putting up numbers. Him and Port Singles was becoming a good team. You know what I mean? Them into individual or whatever with the team around them. They were starting to do some things. But uh, again, you know, they seen opportunity elsewhere, and that's probably where this guy came in, to Trey Burke or whatever, you know, and a number of other But Trey Burke got in. caught up in the sweat. So okay. did Tim Hardaway, okay. who didn't want to go to Dallas. Right. He wanted to stay in the city of New York and play for the Knicks. Right. He was upset that. with that. I remember that. He was exactly. upset with that. Uh, that's when I – at times I tune in and tune out because I'm such a sports fan, but because I don't like the politics of how things go, I, I just stop watching. That's okay. basketball, football. And all the other sports that I was into. Right? You're going to make shit a little bit more interesting. How do you feel about Westbrook being in discussion to come to the Knicks? Do you think that would be a good fit to have Russell Westbrook play for the New York Knicks, being that you got Kevin Durant on the Brooklyn Nets? I think that would bring a lot of political um, commentations to uh, New York or whatever. But will they either of them be able to capitalize? That's the real question. But I think it'll be exciting to watch and it'll bring a lot of Westbrook, sales. triple double. Be, right, right. Shoots thirty percent behind the arc, forty three percent in the field. You know, but his numbers did decline. Yeah, his but, average I mean, per game but, declined because, by nine points. But it's, and that, it makes sense because he was losing his his vigor for where he was playing. He was losing that. You know what I mean? That love for that team and that situation. So, with a new breath of life, you could imagine that. So, you don't think it have nothing to do with I his uh, his mileage, like him getting old, be 31? Nah, I don't think so. I don't think he's going to slow down for another two, three He years. just had a surgery yeah, that, after the playoff. That, now, that might, you know what I mean? But again, you know, with their state of the art, everything, I doubt that that would be a. a big issue for somebody like Westbrook. He's not an injury prone prone person. He seems to have a good stature body wise or whatever. You know what I mean? To the point that where, you know, he had this kind of career going hard in the paint every time and this is first major situation. You know what I mean? So I, I think we should expect big things from Westbrook. Mm. You know what I mean? Outside of cause some of them they just trash. Well a lot of people surprisingly don't want him on the Knicks. They feel that he will uh Hand of the youth. Because right now, the Knicks, we got a lot of young players. We got a coach and Coach Fisdale. Well, it goes back to what he's I was a, saying about the leadership, bro. He's not the best leader. He's more of points on the board, stats, individual type of understanding. So he, I think he would, he could use somebody in the cut that could um, develop him a little bit better. Right. You know what I mean, help him understand uh, um, things a lot better. Okay. So from there, we see how things go. Like, now, uh, Westbrook, I think, I think he's a good look for them. For for the Knicks. Yeah, if it works out. If it works out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, when I mention a name like Alonzo Trier, doesn't ring a bell. You don't know about Alonzo Trier? Kevin Knox. I heard of him. I read a little article on him, or whatever. But again, uh, since I haven't been really watching, I haven't really seen a lot of these two guys play like that. Okay, so you need to catch up. Yeah, I, uh, you know, to be relevant in a conversation like this. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, right. I would definitely need to do some research and check it out. Okay. But um, just speaking on my knowledge of the, the what's it called, the, the franchise and uh, doing a little bit of history, you know, from the times where I was trying to be a fan because I dead was trying to be a fan. Yeah. So do you know about the future out. prospects that we signed, like R.J. Barrett? Nah, that's where I, that's where I went. He came from um, Duke. So, you, know, you don't know about him either? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. um, right now, I'm in on my craft, I make music and things like that. So okay, um, all right. So let me ask you this, brother. I'm, I'm hoping that you know about this man, Kyrie Irving. Yeah, that's my guy. He's pretty good. Do you think he would have been a good fit to come to the Knicks? And he also went to the Nets. I think he would have. He definitely would have been. You know, he's not so much of the type of guy that is. Because uh, he was with LeBron and he held his own, and he didn't let LeBron just. You know, thug him all over the place. You know what I mean? So I think that uh, he's a strong individual mentally. That's the most important. You know what I mean? Do you and think he's an injury prone, number one? 
Yeah, I think he's one of those that's a little bit more injury prone, but he's a little bit stronger. Like, like Rose was the most injury prone type person I ever seen. Like, I never seen nobody that. Like, uh, it was good that he would always go for it like that, but man, it seemed like every other time well, he's on top right now. Rose yeah, he's killing doing, it. He's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. Like, Cause I'm, I'm a fan of Rose or whatever. But and speaking of Derrick Rose, you think the him, Knicks should have kept him? They definitely should have kept him. They definitely should have kept him. That's a, one of the long list of people that I feel like they should have kept when they had him. Like Jamal Crawford and what's the other short dude? Nate? Speak of Jamal Crawford. Sorry to interrupt. God, you. What you liked about his game? Man, I, his overall approach to the game, he was whatever they needed him to be all the time. Usually it was a six man, so that's what we seen. But the fact that he could dish, he could dish when he needed to. He could play defense. He could create plays. You know what I mean? From out, out of scratch. He was a, a coach's player, you know what I mean? That's one thing that I liked about him. And then next was his efficiency. Right. When he decided to score, when they, when he know, known that he need, was needed to score, 40, 30, 40, when, at, at random times, like times where you wouldn't even expect. Jamal Crawford was a well-rounded player, and it's unfortunate that they moved him around so much that he couldn't contribute to one team to get him a chip. You know what I mean? I think that he was the last of the old school guys that I enjoyed watching. Like that type of mind frame to work hard, play harder, you know what I mean? And really just lay it out every night, no matter what's going on. And but on the humble, honor, honorable type of way. You know what I mean? Now a lot of guys ego and pride is too too much in the way. You know, different things like that. But um I, that was my he was, he was one of my last favorite players out of the ground. Yeah. You know, as, uh, you know, as a What's it called? A uh, side player to come in and help or whatever. He's one of my favorite. Not to say that he's not. A, he can't be a leader. Because again, at any given time, he dropped 40, 50. He dropped 50 with every team he played for. Like that's, I, it's not too many greats that he did that. So for him to be able to do that, that speaks greatness to what he does and what he brings to the team. Okay. But um. And last but not least, we're gonna close this out, man. Jeremy Lin get in the ring on the Toronto Raptors before Carmelo Anthony. Do you think Carmelo Anthony did it to himself, man? Yes, he did. As far as... Yes, I think he did it to himself. Do you think he was jealous of Jeremy Lin when it was Lin Sanity up in New York and Carmelo Anthony was out with that soldier shoulder injury? I don't know if it was jealousy, but I, I think Carmelo could have handled it a lot better, you know. But then again, that's what it really looked like. Because uh, there's no reason why he was, you know, seeming like he was hating. Because, you know, this kid was in position to keep his team running. He basically, so while you was resting, nursing yourself, <coughs> he was giving you the, the wins that you needed to carry on to make it through the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But him, again, because he misunderstands, you know, a leadership role. Oh, he's taking my spot. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it seemed like he was hating. Damn. And you know what's interesting about all this? That no one is really talking about Carmelo Anthony being shitted on by Phil Jackson. Uh, well, that's a uh, come on. Then. That's a big part of it. I think that um, Phil Jackson really quieted um, Melo. But he has no control over his game physically. Right. Mentally, yeah, but because a lot of us, we don't understand the mental capacity, right? Of, of, again, of a leader, of a man, right? You know what I mean, man. And I, man, I felt victim to this many times. When we're not focused on the right thing, we are susceptible to somebody sabotaging you. You understand what I'm saying? So because he wasn't focused on being his best outside of the bullshit, right? And focusing on that chip to silence Phil, right? Phil was able to stay in his head and and create the havoc that he did. You know what I mean? But that you can't even be too mad at Phil. Phil don't like niggas like that. Phil don't like niggas. He like controllable niggas. You understand what I'm saying? So when it, when it boils down to this, that's why you think he has this. You know what's his name from um, from the Lakers? He uh, can control the Lakers. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he's not he's not coaching on the Lakers though. No, I know, but I'm just saying that's why. And it's the same thing because think about it. Um, it's not them, man. They, 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 they give us the position for the notoriety for the politics, but they don't really want to see us making shit happen. You understand what I'm saying? Like, look at what they did to um, 
my guy, Phil, uh, not Phil Jackson. Yeah, Phil Jackson. No, not Phil Jackson. It's telling you. Uh, from he played on the Knicks or whatever. Um, what? And he was the. the and his cannon. Nah. Um, he was the coach before Kirk. Jackson. Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson. You see how they did Mark Jackson? He developed that chemistry that was playoff. Of it. Soon as he did that, they moved Curran, the white man. Oh yeah. Fine. From there, now it's Curse team and all of that. They don't even mention Mark Jackson. And then the fact that they make him fucking do the fucking commentary for the games. Right. Yeah, he should be the coach getting the accolades. Right. It's fucking disrespectful, bro. And we, we fucking pump money into these motherfuckers and they don't give a fuck about us. Point blank, period. That's why I stopped watching this shit. That's why I don't follow it like that because right, so this is how they treat our back. all-stars. And this is who we glorify to be. This is how they treat us. Right. Shit crazy. All right, my man. With that being said, I want to thank you for coming on Nickavelli TV. Man. You know? From Joe Real to Nickavelli TV, I appreciate the time and I appreciate the conversation. You guys check out Nickavelli TV. Check me out on the gram. I got some beats coming up. Appreciate your time, though, bro. All right. And that's what it is, man. Nick fans, man, keep that New York state of mind that you guys got that keep y'all strong. Nick fans, y'all the best fans ever, point blank, period. Whether the franchise is worthy of y'all or not, keep that shit going. And we out. Peace.